Uh, in this video we're just going to look at uh, fatty acid structure. Um, we're not going to cover condensation reactions or how triglycerides are formed. That's been covered um, in the diagram um, within the tutorial uh, web page. Okay, um, on the screen now is a uh, general uh, fatty acid. Uh, so I'm going to go over the basic structure of it uh, again. Uh, I have already done this in my audio clip. Um, but basically, um, on the left-hand side here, there is a, a carboxylic acid or carboxyl group, as it's sometimes called. Uh, this is what makes the fatty acid an acid. Um, attached to that is a long hydrocarbon chain with the final carbon uh, there actually being called a methyl group because it's got a CH3 on the end. Um, later on we'll uh, look at how this uh, general uh, structure of a fatty acid can change. Um, and that, that's really what gives uh, lipids their um, unique properties. Um, but because uh, the fatty acid can be quite uh, difficult to draw, it can have many carbons in its hydrocarbon chain, um, what we do is we replace uh, the long chain of hydrocarbons and just put an R uh, there uh, to represent that hydrocarbon chain and uh, we still keep the uh, acid group um, in place there. Um, sometimes when we're talking about multiple uh, fatty acids we can label that R1 and another one R2 and then the final one R3. So uh, very often we'll use this abbreviated uh, formula for the uh, fatty acid. Uh, before we move on, just want to highlight that uh, all fatty as acids are hydrophobic. Okay, that means um, they don't like water. Um, it means that they uh, can't dissolve in water. And um, the other names for um, hydrophobic uh, can be non-polar and the other term we refer, uh, refer to is uh, lipid soluble. So there are uh, the three sort of terms that can describe a fatty acid as not uh, liking uh, water. Okay so what can make uh, fatty acids different? Uh, for our purposes it's going to be the number of carbons that are in the hydrocarbon chain and this second one as well which is the presence uh, of a double bond or just a single bond uh, between the carbon atoms. Okay so when we're talking about a double bond we're not really talking about the double bond that's in the carboxyl group Okay, we're referring to double bonds between the carbons there. So whenever you get um, a fatty acid with just single bonds between the carbons, that fatty acid is said to be saturated. Okay, and if there's a double bond present, uh, the fatty acid is said to be unsaturated. Now the reason for these terms I'll explain later with some other diagrams. Um, but you don't just have to have one double bond uh, within a fatty acid, you can actually have multiple ones. So in this table I've just got a list of some common uh, fatty acids. You don't need to remember the names of them. Um, but in terms of the, the, the bonds between the carbons, the first three um, have single bonds between the carbon atoms and the next three have double bonds but 
Oleic acid just has the one. Linoleic acid has two. And then arachidonic acid as uh, four. So you can get multiple double bonds in uh, fatty acid chains. Okay. So um, that's the saturated, unsaturated nature of the fatty acids and the relevance of these double bonds and the number of carbons uh, we'll cover uh, shortly. So what does it mean uh, to be saturated or uh, unsaturated? Uh, if we look at the saturated fatty acids uh, first, I've got uh, two examples here. I've got palmitic acid and stearic acid. Now, uh, both of these fatty acids have a different number of carbons, um, but they both have single bonds between their carbons. So what that means is, is that every carbon has four bonds attached to it. So this carbon here, if I just label it number one, it's got um, or is attached to another carbon and to two hydrogens and then to another carbon. So it actually has uh, four bonds um, to it and those four bonds you have uh, a carbon carbon bond like that so this is carbon one and attached to that then will be uh, the two hydrogens so around that carbon one we've got four bonds two of them are linked to a hydrogen and the other two bonds link two more carbons onto it so when a fatty acid is saturated what it means is that all of the carbons in the hydrocarbon chain so ignore the uh, carboxylic acid group it's just all of the carbons in the hydrocarbon chain have four atoms attached to it um, all the way along okay so the atoms that attaches are either hydrogens or uh, carbons so that happens um, in all saturated uh, fatty acids now if we come to unsaturated fatty acids what we can see here is there's a single double bond in this oleic acid and um, whenever you get a single double bond you get the loss of two hydrogens so there's less hydrogen in an unsaturated fatty acid and more specifically uh, for one double bond you have two less hydrogens okay so the fact that this is unsaturated means that you can actually add in more hydrogen um, because the double bond there means that there are hydrogens missing so they could be added in um, so that's what one double bond looks like um, within the hydrocarbon chain if we look at linoleic acid it has two uh, double bonds and therefore it will have four less hydrogens um, compared to its saturated counterpart so if you had um, two fatty acids with the same number of carbons but one was saturated and the other was unsaturated the unsaturated one would have less hydrogens. Uh, the other thing to note is when you have a double bond uh, it causes a kink in the hydrocarbon chain and that produces or introduces sorry some important uh, properties into a lipid that um, the unsaturated fatty acids uh, form a part of. So uh, this slide now just um, summarizes some important features of fatty acids. Um, I won't read through it all. Um, everything there I have actually mentioned. So you may want to take some quick notes um, from this slide uh, so you have a copy of them. 
Okay, um, I just want to go through uh, this table um, which highlights some important points about the number of carbon atoms within a fatty acid and whether they have a double bond or multiple double bonds. So the important feature here is all to do with why some lipids can be a liquid at normal room temperature and why some can be a solid at liquid room temperature. Um, so I want to emphasize at this point is that even though we're looking at the fatty acids um, and the it's also important to know that the what we're about to discuss applies to when the fatty acid is part of a lipid so when it's actually bound to the to the glycerol um, so the first thing I want to mention is that any lipid that is a liquid okay is actually called an oil and any lipid that is a solid uh, we call a fat okay and when we say they're liquid or solid we mean at normal room temperature so it's this liquid and solid nature of fats that I want to explain with this table or partly explain anyway because uh, I want you to um, research this uh, as well so if we look at lauric acid um, it's a 12 carbon hydrocarbon chain it has no double bonds in it and it has a melting temperature of 44 degrees now if we take um, for our purposes room temperature uh, to be 25 degrees C um, just for our purposes today now room temperature can be higher or lower than that okay but just to do this activity we'll assume it's 25 so this lauric acid because it has a melting temperature of 44 uh, it's actually a solid at uh, room temperature so what that means is there's not enough heat energy okay so it's an important term here heat energy uh, within the room to actually turn the lauric acid into a liquid now the reason why there isn't enough energy is something that I'd like you to look at and see if you can answer uh, in your books okay so <clears throat> if we look at palmitic acid uh, we've got 16 carbons in that uh, chain there's no double bonds and the melting temperature is 63 so again it's certainly a solid at room temperature so again there's not enough t uh, heat energy within the room uh, to make that fatty acid into a liquid so we can clearly see now there's a relationship here between temperature melting temperature sorry and the number of carbons okay so that's something I want you to look at is what is the reason behind the increased melting temperature when you get uh, more carbons within the hydrocarbon chain okay so that's something that I want you to look up um, the third one the uh, pattern continues with stearic acid it's a solid it's got 18 carbons and the melting temperature is even higher all right so there's certainly something going on with uh, the number of carbons and the melting temperature which is quite important okay so the first three then were saturated fatty acids so they're all saturated if i just put sat there for saturated so they got no double bonds if we go to oleic acid now uh, we have the one double bond here in bold um, it has 18 carbons there's the one double bond but now look at its melting temperature all right it has dropped to 13 degrees if we look at stearic acid 
Stearic acid also has 18 carbons, but it doesn't have the double bond. Oleic acid does. And look how much the temperature has dropped. So it's 13 degrees uh, melting temperature. So this has got to be a liquid at room temperature because 13 degrees is below 25. So what we say is that there is enough heat energy in the room to make oleic acid a liquid. And again, the reason why that happens is something I want you to look into. All right, but clearly the double bond is having an effect on the melting temperature, even when the number of carbons remains the same. In this case, 18. Right, if we go down to linoleic acid, uh, this is one with two double bonds. It still has 18 carbons and it is a liquid because now the melting temperature has gone down to minus five. Okay, so this is most definitely a liquid at room temperature. Now, you may be wondering how can we actually make linoleic acid become a solid? Well, we'd have to put it in a freezer at a temperature lower than minus five, maybe minus 10. That's the only way we could actually get it to freeze. So it does not like to be a solid. It, uh, it, it's more happy in a liquid form, even at minus five degrees. So the only difference between oleic acid and linoleic acid is the number of double bonds. And the second double bond in linoleic acid has had a dramatic effect on the melting temperature. Um, so <clears throat> if we look at arachidonic acid, uh, the carbon numbers have actually gone up now to 20. But the number of double bonds is four. All right, so this is also a liquid. Oops. Right it there. It's also a liquid at room temperature and its melting temperature is minus 49. So again, this means if you wanted to turn arachidonic acid into a solid, you'd have to subject it to a temperature lower than minus 49 to make it a solid. So this arachidonic acid certainly does not like to be a solid. It's definitely a, a liquid. So even though it's got two extra carbons based on um, stearic acid, uh, oleic acid and linoleic acid, it seems that the double bond has a greater effect on the melting temperature than the number of carbons. Uh, that it has. Okay, the last one is arachidic acid and this has 20 carbons but no double bond. So if you look at the melting temperature it's 76 degrees so that is definitely a solid. Now if we wanted to make this a liquid we'd have to heat it to above 76 degrees. All right, so it's very comfortable at being a, a solid at room temperature. So with this last example, we've just got the number of carbons uh, to consider. Um, because the number of carbons is the same as arachidonic acid, we can see that the removal of the double bonds changes the property of the fatty acid to make it a solid. So there's the overview of how carbon numbers and double bonds affect melting temperature. What I need you to do is to look up as to why this happens. What is the science behind um, these different melting temperatures and how do they relate uh, to the structure of the fatty acid? 
Um, to give you a clue, uh, this is definitely something you've been taught at GCSE and, and probably before GCSE as well. So I'll leave you to finish that little uh, part off. It'll be in your booklets, um, so um, you shouldn't shouldn't miss it. Okay, um, that's pretty much it uh, for this video. Uh, the next one is going to be on phospholipids, and in that video we'll have uh, a bit of a comparison between phospholipids and lipids. But that's it for the fatty acids.